Welcome to the Grappling We Re- Let's See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. In this week's show, we're going to recap Fight to Win 148. We're going to recap BJJ Stars 3. We're going to preview the Who's Number 1, headlined by Gordon Ryan versus uh, Ronaldo. And we are going to preview Sug 17, uh, Craig Jones versus Mason Fowler 3, again, again. As always in the show, I'm your host, Mange. I'm the co-host. Emil. And my other co-host. Zach. How you guys doing? Good. Awesome. It was, some, it was a gi weekend, so we figured we'd, uh, we'd bring Zach in because Zach tends to like to cover the gi events and... Uh, it was going to be good. 50 yeah. 50 ruined my weekend. Not going to lie. Ruined was, there was a weekend. lot of it. There were some good matches this weekend that we're going to go through. Um, before we get into that, let's pop through a little bit of news. In uh, the biggest news, uh, Bouchesha, bleh, Bouchesha has announced that he is going to MMA and he has signed with Ali, uh, Khabib's manager, and like every other big, well paid fighter's manager. Uh, huge. Yeah, yeah. Make some money. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a huge. Lost to the com- BJJ community, like Bushesh is still. He's not dead. <laughs> he is dead. He's Might dead to well. me, Maine. He kind of is dead to me too. <laughs> but like he's he I, he is the gold standard. I mean, like he he is the record holder for number of IBJJF World Championships. Period. Thirteen. 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 Mm-hmm. And like, and then he gave the one to Leandro. Yeah. He so just, thirteen. He literally had so many. He was and like, half. here you go. He's like, Here's a gold. You know, Land- Landro, I'll give you the gold with your shoulder broken. Absolute. I don't want to win this way. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Like. So, but it makes sense. He's done so much in BJJ. He's got nothing what, to prove. Yeah, what yeah. else is he gonna do? It was one of those. Somebody, I think somebody on Twitter texted me like, what, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, "You know what? I'm like really happy to see him go get paid. It sucks to see him lo- yeah. like to see him leave because he's been such. A, I hate when really dominating forces in jujitsu like have to leave to make their money. But I like Bushesha. I'm a fan of who he is as a guy. I'm a fan of what he does. Go get your money. Like, give me a super fight occasionally, you know, once or like once yeah. a year. Give me a super fight. ADCC, I'd love, love it. Worlds, I'd love it. Honestly, like, that's more or less how we see Bouchesha, right? Like, we see him yeah. in Worlds and we see him. ADCC and then an occasional super fight. Exactly. So, so it's yeah. hopefully we continue to see that. And guys like Vinny, like, yeah. Vinny, they leave, they come back and do like some big events occasionally, but they primarily are fighters. I might be surprised to see him do Worlds within the next year or two if he's really focusing yeah, on I fighting, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him in ADC. See, ADCC is, like, is a is a big money event, and he's also, yeah. he, has he never won ADCC? He's I don't know. Won. Yeah, I think that's the one that he's always, like, wanted yeah. and never yeah. got, so that sucks, but again, I love seeing guys go get paid, so hopefully it's like a Dorino thing where, you know, he rides through the ranks, and then he fights for, like, a world title and is awesome. I will say, MMA-wise, like... If I'm just speculating here, I just I can't envision in my head Bouchesha being like a dominating force in MMA. I he's heavyweight though, where I can see him being world I mean, ranked. H- in Hodger months. was too, right? And like, Hodger beat Randleman, yeah. and like Hodger was the shit for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and then he yeah, met he Tim Kennedy and <laughs> retired. I mean, there's that too. Yeah, yeah. but so I hope it does well. Um, again, I want to speculate as, as much as we can about this, yeah. but there's not a whole lot of them. Like he's signed, he's with Ali, so he's going to get paid. Good for him. In other uh, BJJ news, oh, let's not do BJJ news. Let's do uh, Felipe Andrew has left the Zenith team and joined Alliance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got nothing else on that. They're it's keep- interesting timing. Like he's been super active recently. Like, you know. And he's been subbing like Hulk and Keenan and yeah. other folks. But those are the two like big yeah. marquee like flash sub victories he's gotten. So the text he put out didn't give me a whole lot of information as to like why the team move they never do. happened. Yeah. They which, I mean, you don't want to be political about that. Yeah, thing, which, I'm, which I'm kind of cool Do we with. know what Alliance camp he's going to be at no. mainly? I, I know nothing aside from that he has moved. Yeah. And then same thing with like, uh, who else moved recently? Um, the Meows. Like, I yeah. still don't know who the Meows are going to be at. You know, again, guys move teams. Yeah. Not, not. I mean, Keenan moved and like he was just kind of floating around for a yeah. while. Yeah. I think we're, we're definitely in an age of jujitsu now where like the gravitational pull of like single camps isn't as strong as it but was it happens every couple of years where you get some big camps and then kind of people make their yeah. new teams and then you get big camps, kind of like Jackie yeah, yeah. Few, we all seen it a few times i mean that happened back in the day too yeah that's right? what like, I mean. it's, like it's t- tt and like now yeah. we've had auto so yeah. but it's more like, like just seeing people float right like they won't yeah. go to a single location and and people are more cool with it now like i know oh, yeah. keenan was training in the blue basement for a while mm-hmm. um you know it's that just, went well yeah <laughs> if you do not know uh those two teams have been going at it for a bit now uh during quarantine on instagram yeah if you want to look at any reddit threads on the beef uh have fun with that i don't want to talk about it 
Uh, let's see. Another jujitsu news. You got anything else on the team switches? Uh, Grace Gundrum received her black belt after a great match with Danielle Kelly on jiu-jitsu overtime. Uh, I'm not going to cover jiu-jitsu overtime because uh, none of us watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. props to her. I think 18 years old, so technically a year before IBJJF, you're allowed to. But it, ain't no one think that she's not a black belt. Yeah, especially with, like, she we've been, is amazing. We've been covering her on the show since the duration of the show. She's been on EBI since she was like 14 or 13. Yeah. yeah. Hard right. to straight, argue against that promotion, even people. though Dude, she's 18. Great match right. with Rukako Yuasa. Like, yeah. she's, I, I would not be, I think she's like, she got, she has some wrestling credential after like a year of high school wrestling. Oh, she like won a, like a champ, like some level of championship. I forgot what her wrestling credentials are, but like, very good grappler. Yeah. Well, I hope now that she has the official black belt, we get to see her in more bigger promotions, you know. And yeah, like, I, hope I feel like that was going to start happening anyways. Right. And since it was going to start happening anyways, it makes a lot of sense for her to just yeah. actually be promoted. Instead it's like, of, hey, you're already fighting black belts. You're already competing with some of the best right. female black belts in the world at the weight and above the weight. How can we not call like, you? Yep. Let's yeah. put call you... Let's, spade a spade. You're, yeah. yeah. Good, so good for her. Congrats. Yeah. Um, really have enjoyed covering her over the years and looking forward to not covering her as a black belt. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Jits King has announced the event for September 6th. We're going to cover that as we get closer to the event. But, you know, Jits King, Third Coast are announcing more events. Third Coast has announced another event into August. Super excited about that. We're going to preview the Third Coast bracket uh, this week, actually. Or, sorry, next week, actually. Um, in other news, Mike Tyson is going to fight Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> again. We were talking about this about a month ago when he came, announced that he was coming back, and so it's... it's. I mean, know. every week I see, like, new pad work videos from Mike Tyson, and it's it's still impressive. It's that still dude awesome. is just 52 gonna, or something? Yeah. He's going to continue r- running out of money and taking a high-profile fight every five to ten years for the rest of his life, and I, I enjoy seeing it and look forward to more. And Mike, I can't dude, wait to see him fight at 75. The, the <laughs> shitty thing is... He looks really good on the pads, which yeah. is like most guys come back and you're like, oh, this can be rough. Like Tyson's the one guy that I went, all right, like you might disappoint me because <laughs> like you may buck the rule. I may think you're going to buck the rule and it goes horribly wrong, but you might be the dude because uh, he's 50 something and still hits like a truck. It looks like. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Uh, in other jujitsu, other BJJ uh, MMA news. Um Verdum, Armbar, Gustafson, and Gustafson's moved up to heavyweight, and everyone thought, did Gustafson not see the Vinnie Magalhaes fight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, Verdum looks good. Yeah, Verdum looks good. It's awesome to see him, you know, pulling out sub victories. Off like, suspension, back seven guys. I think he's, he's fought, I think, one or two times since he's been off once. suspension. Once, it was uh, Alexi Olenek. It was yeah. the Olenek fight. I yeah. forgot about that fight. Yeah, Verdum was looking a little soft, a little, little yeah. muffin toppy. And then... Dude, beat Gustafson, like, <laughs> Two and a half minutes? Yeah. Like quick. Handedly, yeah. Like quick. Yeah. Like, oh, enjoy. You're going to fight one of the best heavyweights by the numbers of all time. Yep. Like, it's now him and Stipe up there with Fedor in, in DC. Like, those four dudes are by the numbers the best heavyweights of all time. That's it gets said a lot, I feel but like. By my opinion, it's absolutely Stipe, and that's what really matters. Yes. You, <laughs> see, people on the show do not, re, do not aren't going to know that you trained with Stipe for like a decade. I didn't know that, really. Yeah, you six, didn't know that? Seven years. Yeah. I was at Strong Style before I moved to Philly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he, tra- he trained with him like, uh, he's a heavyweight. Yeah. And yeah. he fought at the same time Stipe was fighting. Oh, no yeah. shit. Yeah. But the last time I sparred Stipe was the Struve fight because. Oh, after you that, sparred him? No, he was like a oh, training yeah, partner. Yeah, it was like him. normal. What? He, oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the show, Emil. <laughs> Damn. All right. It's not, it's as bad as it sounds, honestly. That's why I don't get punched in the head anymore, honestly. <laughs> and now you're a brain doctor. <laughs> yeah. Probably could be a better one if I didn't get in the head so much. <laughs> yeah, Zach is a slew of fights with a strong style for a while. Like, yeah, he know he knows his MMA. That's why when you like don't comment on MMA stuff, it makes me laugh because <laughs> you are probably the most qualified of the three of us to talk oh, about MMA. Hands down. Hands down. Yeah. Oh. Well. Uh, so let's see. I don't think I have any other uh, news this week. You guys move into the, yeah, do we want to move into the recaps? Yeah, let's do it. Let's right, start with the, start? I knew we were going to ask that. BJJ Stars. Let's start with BJJ Stars. BJJ Stars 3. They didn't They didn't give it the three designated, but this is the third BJJ Stars event. And to keep my notes clear, uh, BJJ Stars 3, uh, there was a little bit of like oddity with the uh, licensing for the stream. People were kind of, international viewers were kind of upset. Flow Grappling only had the license to broadcast in North America. They didn't have the international rights. Weird. Yeah. Um, like Saw they still that. had a pay-per-view for like other places in the world. Uh, I live in North America, so it was fine for me, but we've also paid for every other BJJ Stars event prior to this, so yeah. I get one occasionally. That's so weird. Huh? Yeah. Again, they wanted, they wanted 
They just got the North American rights. I think we've seen them do it for Spider as well. I mean, a lot of times the international, like the super international events, um, this will happen. But so yeah, cool. Uh, we want to start. Want to start at the top of the card? Yeah, bottom top. Of the card. Let's so. start with uh, Kainan defeating Joao Gabriel Hosha oh. six to four. Um, yeah, this 50, was a fifty fifty. Main yeah. alluded to it uh, previously in the news, but uh, there was a lot of 50-50 this weekend. This enti- dude, fight to win it and BJJ stars. It felt a little bit like 2013, you know, with the amount of 50-50 that we were seeing. But it was like, it was 2013-50-50, whereas like guys were kind of not sweeping as much as I would like, and it got, they sat in the 50-50. Not, was not also, just this match, but like this entire weekend was a lot of 2013-50-50. Well, it was a lot of 2013 light featherweight 50-50 yep. at heavyweight, yeah, which is peculiar concerning yeah (laughs) so this was one of the matches you know um and there was a fair amount of a fair amount of the match was on the feet which was great um there were some great transitions back and forth but a lot of it was spent in 50 50 um and jog blew his knee out again yeah twice well there i know zach you talked about how there was like some specific moments yeah so there there was one thing that i i I really appreciated jock gabriel uh technically in this and it was after there was some 50 50 exchanges um and so gabriel eventually is able to stand he transitions to an x guard after 50 50 there's a little bit of a, a scramble he's able to transition to an x guard and sits up into like a very classic single leg x guard sweep and kynan starts kind of running out of it and gabriel chases him down and then is extremely patient with it and starts to sort of starts to suck him back into the mat and kynan was kind of trying to I think he was probably trying to get out of bounds, honestly, yeah. for a little bit. He was and pointed the other direction with the knee bent, like he was gonna like yeah. book it. Like, yeah, and it was. And Joe Gabriel did a really, really nice job of not letting him do that, getting him back into the center, being patient with it, and then he did end up getting the. Well, I don't know if he ended up getting points for the sweep. Um, was it this sweep? And this match scored six to four. And I think most of the scoring was in the 50-50 position. I don't know if yeah. he got the score off of this one. It's or pretty if it hard was. to settle on Kainan. Like, yeah, you know, I, I think he ended up not getting it. But I, I did appreciate that Like, I at that level, especially with Kainan, who's such an unbelievable athlete yeah. and knows the game so well, for him to even get that far, it was it was one of those things that, you know, I, I think a lot of times when I'm watching jiu-jitsu, I try to look for those pieces of, of technical prowess and and bjj intelligence that i really like those are the parts of watching bjj that i really like and that was something that i honestly can't even remember if it ended up working out for him but it was the right thing to do exactly yeah and it was it was really good it was patient yes the patience was really nice and he was showing his experience versus someone i mean kynan's unbelievable but you know versus some of these newer guys that might not have been as patient with that and might have chased him down and tackled him out of bounds and not gotten the opportunity to finish whereas he was patient and controlled and was able to suck him back in. Yeah, I feel like out of out of like the near near takedowns, near sweeps that occur at the boundary, the vast majority end up going out of bounds. People don't have that patience to pull yep. them back in. Yeah, uh, or, they or they don't have the control. Yeah. Is everything. A lot of times, like guys know you need to pull them back in, and they get in that pulling match where it's like one guy's jumping this way, yep. other guy's pulling this way. The guy that's pulling doesn't settle and just kind of like hunker down and then like walk them back and yep. you're out it. it was, or they just go back to neutral, and you spent all that time working into your yep. single leg X, getting up all that energy, and now you're at neutral when yep whatever. And so it was, it was a nice display of years of completing a, competing as a high level black belt showing in that like one little instance yeah and unfortunately he exploded Venice yeah exploded. <laughs> well there was that but also just like it's you know it, it's hard for me to identify now it's like it's like crying wolf right like specifically i'm i'm thinking back to the kasai that you and i covered with yeah. joao gabriel we were there. down at, we were, went to, down to dallas to cover the and kasai heavyweight he gp such a big deal out of an alleged like short grab that kyle bame did mm-hmm. and then he got heel hooked directly after that and it was it was a, it was a weird match and he injured his knee and then the uh, holes talked to him and convinced him to stay in the tournament even though he was injured and his knee looked like it buckled a little bit and it was it was a whole kind of weirdness to yeah. the rest of his kasai matches and a, and a very like pronounced limp that he did then and he like i saw it again now where like his back was dipping almost like like you know like a a pantomimed like injury it, it was interesting um yeah. so it's just it is hard for me to it, here's here's my philosophy is if you are if you're seriously injured and especially enough where like they have to send medics on the match is over that's that's it 
you don't get arrest. You don't get like you know. Yeah, you've you, always been you get, kind of kind of had a really hard line about this kind of stuff. It's like they, it's like the the like the you know Mr. Miyagi scene, you know, whatever. Like you're not gonna suddenly not be injured, you know, like when you take a break. I mean, we've seen a world's finals match end with someone having a broken arm and running around for two minutes, though. So, Jacare. Yeah, Jacare won a match with a broken ass but arm. There was no pause. You know, that's the difference, right? Like, yeah, that's fair. So it's like, yeah. If, I mean, if, there could have been a pause. There could, uh, well, <laughs> the thing is that, like, if you're going to, if you're going to ask for a pause, the match is over. Yeah, that's like fair. that's that's it. That's a that should be counted as a verbal tap, except for kicks in the nuts. Except, reasonable yeah that's Give that. i'll draw yeah. the line there yeah that's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good one so but match yeah. ends six to four yeah. uh kind of takes it so i my big takeaway here if i'm like kind of the technical the technical back and forth of the 50 50 sweeps in the match was are we going to see kainan fight like two weight classes up constantly because he's at plus nine nine for adcc he is now fighting draw gabriel like, he was going to fight um, Pena, who's also a weight class up. Like, are we just going to see him transition to fighting, yeah. like, one or two weight classes up now? Is he going to go into Worlds at, like, whatever the fuck weight class yeah. they're in for this one? I, I, that was kind of my I mean, kind of takeaway. Like, we've, we've seen kind of consistently now fight up, like, 20 or 30 pounds. <clears throat> yeah. Is that just what he's doing now? Because he looks good enough to do it. I mean, he's I mean, fighting he personally, the best in the world. But, uh, it's, he, I think he probably is also considering what the team wants. And yeah, because Hulk's does, 88. Yeah, does we Atos want Hulk and Kynan in the same weight I class? I think Hulk had like four dudes at 88 uh, two years ago. Um, and they had to move guys around to get them out. Yeah. I think in ADCC, they had guys at 88. They had to move them yeah. around to get them out at 88. Yeah. Um, I, I'm super curious about that because now Zhao Gate with Hulk, I mean, with Bouchesha out of the weight class, right. Zhao Gabriel was the and you other have, guy. Uh, Victor Hugo now, too. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. damn, that is a, a pretty top heavy organization. That they but got that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, if Kainan can now beat, you know, potentially the number one guy, if Bouchesha's out at the weight class, does he make a run at, you know, yeah, Ultra? Maybe. So that was kind of my takeaway here was like, you know, what, is, what does Duarte do? Because now, I mean, if you're going to get USADA suspended, think, this is the best year to do it. I, well, yeah. the other thing, I mean, again, like Victor Hugo is like naturally at that. Oh, but Victor Hugo was big as shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm saying like, I would be surprised if Kainan entered into a, like a tournament that wasn't a ADCC. one-off super fight. Yeah. Yeah. With, with Victor Hugo in it, you know. That's a good yeah. point. I'm I want to see that surprised. match now on the gi. <laughs> What Victor Hugo versus Kaina? Kaina? I mean, Kaina's got that. I, of course, you, you say that. you're never gonna pick against him. You're never gonna pick against Kaina. Uh, so that's like up for that match. In the gi, hell no. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Next no. match we had Lucas the Hulk Barbosa defeating Leandro Le, no, Leandro Low, uh, two to zero. Dude gets it off the bat with off a takedown. Yeah, bad dude. That right collar away. drag, like falling collar drag leg trip. This, I it was I a looked, textbook. I was pissed. I was watching this live. I looked away and like, oh, we got takedown. I was like, <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like immediately. Yeah. And so Leandro match. I should never Leandro. Oh, I should never look away initially as the match starts because like this is not an infrequent thing. So I had to go back and rewatch the takedown. Yeah. You know what I really laughed about was like, so first off, the more I watch Hulk, the more I'm like, this dude Hulk uses, I some of the most diverse guard passing that I've seen like he really uses fundamentally different passing a lot but the the passing style that he specifically chose right off of the takedown was the tripod pass against yeah. like the guy known for the tripod I pass, thought right? I didn't I was kind of curious as to why he did that like that I saw well, the same thing I don't know so again what, as far as I was watching I think I have an answer to that is that so Lowe's strategy on this i think was actually really smart and then just kind of broke down towards the end but he was playing a lot of lasso which i mean it's not uncommon mm-hmm. for him mm-hmm. lately but he was playing a lot of lasso and that's a really brilliant way to neutralize hulk's athleticism because i think low concedes athleticism to hulk on this by a long shot mm-hmm. and so you have a guy that's known for being athletic known for being explosive and known for passing in a way that is it very explosive? He's blowing and, the doors off you, passing. Right, and yeah. so you neutralize that with the spider or or lassos or those kinds of things that, that keep the shoulders like a lasso past the and feet. like a collar sleeve lasso for like a big piece of for the match. most of the match. Yeah. And it was yeah. actually it was really effective. And Hulk's way of dealing with that was the tripod pass because the tripod pass is a nice way to neutralize the the, colors, the yeah. lassos without. So it was it was a really back and forth strategic thing that didn't. I mean, it was kind of 
maybe a little boring to watch because it was very stalemate but they were doing really brilliant things strategically, and then I, I, things broke down when they, they got up to neutral towards the end at a certain point, and then Lowe pulled guard again and couldn't get the lasso back. And well, so he lost his... I, this uh, is interesting because uh, I absolutely agree like I, I noticed Leandro's propensity for, for doing the, the spider and the lasso and Hulk's this is where Hulk's guard passing switching was really incredible because he started to initiate a lot of passes with the ankle grips yep and so he took away the uh, Leandro's ability to get those looped in and entangle him which was awesome but then on the other hand Leandro did a great job at answering each one of those like ankle grip pass attempts with great tech ups, like really great balance. Like he was able to do that multiple times in a row. This is general like inversions and guard retention was incredible throughout the whole match. Things mm -hmm. were moving very fast. Yeah. Just, you know, pretty par for the course for Hulk matches. But was this the match where Hulk gets all the way around in like North South and yep. then Leandro just goes, mm, nah, and like yep. puts his feet on, like turns him back over. Yep. Like, no. And his, oh, his regarding so was, I was yeah, watching this with was Spencer and I was like, yo, that should be two advantages. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. if, if you put, if you play, if you almost pass the guard, it's an advantage. If you get to North South on the guy and pass and he just like, stops you at the last second like that that's two advantages i'm sorry that's that's not just one advantage it's not yeah. points you didn't actually pass but i just think you should get that's the one place that you should get yeah. two advantages <laughs> when you actually do pass the guard and yeah. then they just stop you yeah yeah i mean he didn't control for three seconds yeah yeah, yeah. it was it, the guard retention was great and then in the end i think at least as far as i could see it the that that guard pull Leandro couldn't I get really the grips that he wanted. Leandro was going to do, I, probably not going to hit on a Hulk, but he does that guard pull Tomonagi that we see from like Megaton, like yeah. the Yoko Tomonagi from the side. Leandro tends to do it like on the overhead. He'll drop down and then he'll do like a kick. Um, what's the double feet in the armpit sweep? Like he'll kick you down and then he'll do that to you over. And he kind of uh -oh. tried it with Hulk, but Hulk settled down <laughs> and he just like stayed in the Tomonagi position, like double feet on the hip guard pull. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, Hulk basically turned it up on that on that last guard pull yeah. where he uh Hulk gets a double collar grip and just starts squashing yeah. uh Leandro and then like this is such a classic Hulk just change insanely quick change of uh direction pops up and then does one of the fastest backstep passes like yeah. I, it was well he he fast. uses the the double collar grip I think for two reasons. One, Leandro can't get the lassos that were preventing him from passing the whole match, but also he he pressured into the bottom leg, I think it was Leandro's left leg, and gets that isolated on the mat, mm -hmm. and then once that's isolated on the mat, then he popped back up and moved. So he was, it wasn't just like a a spontaneous decision explosion. Like he used yep. the, that double collar in a way that isolated a leg so that he could pop up and do that. So it was very well calculated. And but yeah, the, the end sequence is, is uh, yeah, I absolutely well calculated. I, I 100% think that Hulk is just on a different level when it comes to these passing sequences and adjusting the passing. Yeah. Because yeah. so many people, we're all guilty of this, just like we got our this pass. This is my pass. Yeah, this, this is what I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like really adaptive with it. Um, ends up taking the back, uh, not getting both hooks in officially, but like flattening out Leandro on his stomach. And Commentary thought he was going for a choke there for a second. Yeah. Because he's going to finish. And I was like, he's not going to finish and then, Leandro. And then, you know, he, he ends up, uh, Hulk ends up on kind of like a back triangle, starting to separate the arms as time expires. If there was 30 seconds left, yeah, I it think. Been. Hulk is one of the, like, there's a couple guys and she's a lot of the high level guys. If there's like 15 seconds left in a match, they have like two extra gears that they can throw it to if they're on a sub. Um, we, we say that a lot yeah. of like high level just you guys is like they'll finish with like 10 seconds left. You're like, who in the last 15 seconds, like you exploded, got to the position, and then just like started ripping the yeah. arm out and you got it with like well, five seconds left. Strategically, there's also a lot less risk in doing yes. that in the last 30 seconds of the match. You know, maybe you finish the submission, but if you don't, then. You don't lose position yet. You're not, yeah, you're not being crushed for another four minutes of the match. Yep. You don't lose so, any points. Yeah, you can take risks towards the end, and I think a lot of these high-level guys are very aware of time on the clock, and mm -hmm. it's it's just as much another gear as it is, like, calculated risk. Yeah. So. Yep. 
Because you also see a lot of times when people explode and go crazy and then just fucking lose anyways because yeah. what they exploded into didn't work, right? Yeah. You remember the ones that end in a submission, That's but reasonable. they both happen. <laughs> So, I got nothing else on that one. Nope. Yeah. Next one. Next match, we have Patrick Gaudio defeating Herber Santos via advantages. Two to one. The entirety of this match, I was like, Herber's going to go off. He's going to do it. I'm just waiting for him to, like, throw a crazy-ass yeah. knee bar from 50-50. Oh, he did, dude. He did. Well, he did. He did. He did. It, but it, it wasn't. But Gaudio it, was hip to it. I think, he wa- didn't, he, didn't he knee bar Gaudio at um, one of the majors? I can't remember. I know. Herber, so I, I remember you talked. You specifically brought this up in the preview, like. So if you don't know, Herber Santos is one of the best gi leg lockers around. I mean, when I probably like six or eight months ago, I got into a discussion of like who the like by the numbers yeah. who the best leg lockers are, and I went through a ton of stuff with BJ Heroes, and I came across Herber. And Herber has like more consistent high level leg lock wins than anyone else and he has one of my favorite knee bar entries which is a knee bar entry off of the 50 50 something we saw a lot of this weekend and yeah he this this exact sequence happens where um patrick pulls into the 50 50 and herbert just immediately yanks into a actually really good looking knee bar but was pretty high up on the knee and yeah. Gaudio was able to clear the knee line and roll through for a, a very close back take attempt but herbert was like totally hip to it um, and ends up, uh, you know, still recovering. We give a lot of shit to Herberth because he's Herber Santos. But <laughs> when the dude shows up, like, yeah, he can good, do he. this high level. Like, you don't win a world championship on, like, a fluke. Yep. He's really, really good. Like, I would love to see more of this Herber Santos. He like, loses the match, but yeah. competitive well, throughout he just, and through. He seemed more cautious than normal. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, I think that he had, he, we've seen him in two different gears. One is is not cautious and then some weird things happen and one is not cautious and he kills it yeah. right it, it this match felt a little bit weird to me he was because he was, he, was he was tentative the entire yeah. time like there Which was is a, an uncharacteristic for him i think yeah I think overall yeah that's right when the matches that matches that he performs like this he's usually not tentative that's like, a good way of putting yeah. it like i feel like he was reacting more to gaudio than he was like yeah implementing and you know dictating and a lot of those like, those leg locks i mean i could be wrong on this because it's just i'm remembering matches from him but a lot of those leg lock wins that he gets are off of sort of scrambly kind of yeah. positions like he he's an explosive grab, player he and he'll just grab a leg fucking crank yeah and so like he does have setups obviously for it and he does do things calculated but at the same time a lot of those those wins come off of almost like a counter striker yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and that, that just didn't pop up in this match yep yeah, yeah. so yeah much uh, Floor match. I kind of I, w- I wanted to see Herbert just like I wanted to see Gaudio pull guard, and I wanted to see Herber <laughs> sprawl and pass at the same time. <laughs> like he shouldn't be able to because people shouldn't be able to move that fast. Like that's those are the two favorite yeah. things from Herbert is watching people pull on him as a highlight. Watch people pull on him and watching him sprawl and pass. Like <laughs> like bro, he was around in the air and then you started sprawling and still beat him. And then there's a slow motion of him knee barring someone from fifty fifty. That's just beautiful. It's yeah. just like him like dropping like hip line to hip line on this knee bar and it's just like i, I watched it over and over again that's yeah. the birth i want to see but uh i think uh so patrick gets it done yeah they are now i think one and one i think most recently i don't know if they fought more than that but sounds right to me i'll see him running back next match uh this is i think one of my favorite matches of the weekend uh zaki Berhens defeated uh, cloudy nope. did i miss that, some shit gabriel no. gonzaga, gonzaga defeating Lee. leo lich via advantage yeah. but yeah let's let's talk about the exact gonzaga, honestly gonzaga look good this yeah. is the best yeah. we've seen gonzaga look in a bit i think we've seen him versus gordon ryan we've seen him a couple different times on the show uh, mostly on sug i think but like in the gi looks good you know, I'm, I, if if this is the Gonzaga that shows up, I'm more than happy to see like more from yeah. more yeah. from Gonzaga again. Next match, I want to talk about this one. Favorite yeah. match Zaki, of the weekend: Zaki Behens def- uh, subbing Claudio Calzans via Armin Ezekiel choke. Uh, again, fifty fifty, but this was great. Um, towards, I'd say like a little over halfway through the match, um, there's this end sequence that I want to talk through because it's fucking dope, and mainly this is just a way of showing how tenacious Izaki is, but Izaki, they're in 50, 50 and Izaki stands up and he breaks open Claudio's 50, 50 and shoves the leg down. That's the one that crosses over and he backsteps. So he's kind of like floating on the inner thigh of Izaki's other or uh, Claudio's other leg. 
if you're going to get out of 50-50, it's not necessarily like a super uncommon exit to 50-50. Right. Yeah. It's just a just think about breaking it, shoving the leg down, and then backstepping. And, but, he, but he makes the turn. He kind of turns almost yep. like put his back towards Kalazans, but with his positioning, Kalazans can't immediately like go for a leg or go for the back yeah. because he's like very controlled in where he stands. And his so, knees and his chest with not yeah, a lot of power to like, it. like so. exactly compressing him down. And and Azaki then launches into one of the coolest. Um, back take passing sequences I've seen. It looks very deliberate. So basically, you know, Claudio is is squished and he starts reaching to Izaki's far hip to almost try to grab so he could like try to take the back or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Izaki feels that and basically does a roll. And as he's rolling he, Izaki tucks his leg behind Claudio's arm. You caught this, and yeah, I, missed I missed this on the front. I watched this. It's, I missed this. I rewound completely. this sequence like four times, and I still missed this piece. Well, it's, it's because right when it happened, the camera zoomed. It cut to a zoomed-in camera angle, uh -oh. and it's it's actually really tricky to see. But I was able to pause it enough to like see what happens. But you can think of this almost as an omoplata style motion, that, right? So, like, right. The, the, like the, leg, the leg is b biting behind into the armpit. And in the middle of this roll, Izaki grabs a wrist grip on the arm that he's doing that kind of, like, omoplata biting motion. In the middle of the transition. Yeah. And forces Claudio into the roll so that Izaki can start to attempt to take the back. And it was just... It's insanely fast. I highly recommend like watching that roll and maybe pausing just to see these you're, you're gonna have to pause. these details yeah. that like I cannot believe Izaki did in the middle of this roll. And but he doesn't he followed that he up, follows it up with another unbelievable this is the part that I was really impressed with with this whole thing because he follows it up with another series of just technically genius moves where he ends up in a position where his knee is sort of uh, between Kelzan's legs and so he's got knee pressure up he's keeping Kelzan's uh, bottom shin bottom knee close to his chest and his top leg has heavy pressure and he's he's keeping him locked in almost like a leg drag and so he's, he's basically in this leg drag yeah, position yeah. squat down and, really and Claudio Kalazan's like tries to sort of get back yeah. almost into um not 50 50 he's trying but, to butt like, scoot in, out in the a half little guard bit almost yeah and, but Azaki does a really Azaki, good yeah. job here of keeping his leg, keeping Claudio from getting in yep. to get that leg through again. And then while he's in this like squat down, almost leg drag like position, he starts setting up his choke grips with all of that pressure pressing down. Uh, Calzans is, is cramped up into a little ball. And he, while he's there, he gets the grips and he just feeds the grips in however the hell he wants because Kelzans can't really do much with that pressure on him. And that's after he gets those grips perfectly. That's when he starts moving for the back and he ends up not even needing to take the back because the grips are so strong that he's able to get the finish before I, I he even worries the, about getting the, the hooks camera in. orientation here yep. because you see how uh, on commentary basically go, I was going to look for the arm in Ezekiel and you see him just like grab yep. and like, and like you see all the muscles like pulling into the gi and he starts to turn it over. And I was like, yo, he actually might like get this because sometimes guys will use the arm in Ezekiel from this position to take the back yep. and other times guys will use it to finish and he, you can just see in like his hand of how he grips his own um his own like sleeve grip there yep. I was like oh he's gonna try he's to gonna finish this he locks it in and uh dude finishes it this yep. is one of the best leg drag sequences I have yep. seen like executed at this high level it is it is gorgeous yeah. and yep. so <clears throat> basically right off of that back take attempt Izaki is not able to take the back and they're both lying down and that's exactly as Zach mentioned where Izaki's in this position that I've seen people um, you know I've been to seminars where they talk about this oh, this this, um, this leg dragon sequence and I there was never a, a clear name for it but Howell actually describes it really well I think he calls it the laying down leg drag so just envision you're in a leg drag position in the passing position and rather than standing you're kind of on your back right yeah and so your your shin is behind the knees of your opponent um and azaki then stands up into a traditional leg drag sequence and really beautifully walks he does exactly what you're supposed to do which is walk your opponent so that your opponent is on their hip and not on their back and that's what where he's able to get into that just absurd pressure position where he gets his grips 
and he's already in this he's already in the submission he's just crunching claudio in it's such yeah. a great it, again sequence. it was it was my like sequence of the weekend yeah. oh yeah 100 percent. because it, like all of the little things that he did and like that's the, a that's a lot that happened a there. lot just, it's a lot of ex- exchanges and, and a lot, lot like of a, things that happened maybe 20 seconds oh maybe. more than that i think is it longer than that i oh. think it oh he's is. in the leg drag for a bit there isn't he it's yeah i it that's the he thing takes that his I'm, time on getting the grips but. it's yeah. amazing because yeah as zach said there's it was a long sequence. There's so many points along that sequence where something could have gone wrong. Izaki could have executed poorly, but he does not. He sti- yeah. he has the tenacity to stick through it and continue on and bring the pressure. It ends in, in, in a really awesome submission. So yeah. great, great sequence. Yeah, it was yep. a, it was a cool ass way worth watching on repeat a bunch of times yep. to figure out what the hell happened because it's yeah. This is one of those like go and study the technique and like. Yep get pieces and parts of it as you drill it and maybe you can one day hit this like yeah. once on like a, a blue purple or, or you can just appreciate what good jujitsu is <laughs> yeah. for a little bit <laughs> this is this is something i can't do yeah awesome thanks azaki uh i got nothing more in the match it was, it was yep. great oh, I, you was should beautiful. go back you should go back and watch this mm-hmm. uh if you have flow go back and watch the finish sequence here because it's it's something special you don't yeah. see something you don't see like you don't see this a lot no not at that level especially yep so next up, we have Sergio Moraes defeating Luis Marquez via north-south choke. In the gi, baby. Yep. Yeah. I don't see a whole lot of him in the gi, and he locks in, and I was like, he's not going to finish. Because nope. like, in the gi, you rarely see north-south cho- north, chokes finished in like competition. You see it occasionally. We see it you know, once every couple months on Fight to Win. He locked it in fast and just like settles down and like, chokes the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it's a cool finish. You don't, you do not see north so north south chokes very often. Well, also even before the north south choke, this was like, I love seeing this jujitsu. So there was a, a like a seven minute period where they were just in closed guard, but the last two minutes of the match, a minute and a half of the match is exactly the kind of jujitsu that I like to see. It's just slow and controlled and <laughs> smashy. And it's not, it might not be the most exciting thing in the world, but I love seeing technique done so cleanly and you know you Lovato fan yeah okay yeah yeah that's a good that's, yeah. that was like yeah, the yeah, one yeah. guy that I can think of it's like cool who's the most like positional yeah, like I love walk Lovato. you down yeah. grind you and then sub you at the end just yeah, demoralize you until the match is over it's great um but you know uh at least he's he's in close guard um Sergio opens for a split second Luis is able to pin the knee and start moving into pass. He's in half guard for a little bit. He has this really beautiful half guard pass, which is a classic thing that, you know, he's got the underhook on the opposite side um, and he uh, shoulder pressures in and unhooks his back leg with his, his free foot It's just a heavy tripod I love, passing. I love like that. it's so clean. We teach that to, I'll teach that to white belts and he did it so beautifully that it worked at this level. And then, moved into side control and maintained side control and then moved to north south and maintained north south and then moved into the choke like it was just sequential beautifully controlled jujitsu and if it's the kind of match that like if someone is starting jujitsu and they want to know how to do things really right that's what i'm going to go tell you to watch like yeah. watch the end of this match this is how you win a match just because it's not like a zaki behance where it's like what the hell happened yeah, it's like, like no he, he passes the guard then yeah. he settles then he goes to the next position oh, and then i love he it. settles and then he gets more points and then he settles, and then he chokes him, and then he wins. Yep. So, f- fun match. Only other sub on the card. Uh, next match, you have anything else on this nope, match? that's it. Anna Rodriguez defeating Bianca Basilio via advantage. Um, three to one on advantages. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the second time that these two women have met. Uh, I think Anna took a uh, commentary talked about it. I think she it, was a, it was a ref's decision was the previous one, I think. It was a very, very close match. Yeah. And this was... Definitely a slower match of the weekend. What kept what kept me engaged in this match is I'm a huge fan of Bianca, and the commentary kind of keyed me into like the rivalry and talked about like in the context of their previous match what I was watching. I did really enjoy that was really good commentary from the team over at Flow. Was they were they're engaging like this is why we're seeing what we're seeing, and this is kind of how it feeds into the previous match. This is what we saw from both players. Like they did a really good job engaging me in this match because the match was definitely slower yeah the you know we see a lot of modified 50 50 in this match i would say the the most action occurs in the last three minutes Mm -hmm. when Mm -hmm. anna starts to turn it up yep so she also uses very varied 
um, passing sequences here. I have that too. Um, tripod over under, switching to double unders. Mm -hmm. And the double unders was uh, where she, you know, she well, really got successful. At the beginning of the match, the double unders were, work I mean, not exactly working for her, but were definitely causing Bianca some trouble for like a minute and a half. And then yeah. you ended up in the 50-50. And so she kind of went back to what was working in the beginning, but then yep. was varying it up again, like you said, with well, she was It wasn't, it wasn't the same thing that she was doing at the beginning of the match. No, no, it like, wasn't exactly she, the same. She like she figured out where like the leverage points were and, and sort of played off of what she had figured out at the beginning of the match. And you see yeah. kind of not work at the beginning of the match. And then towards the end of the match, you see her start to kind of learn and figure out what she needs to do and make the changes. So, so the, you know, what worked at the end of the match and she damn near took uh, <laughs> Bianca's back off of this was uh, during the double under attempt. She basically was really far over uh, Bianca's hi hips and Bianca's hips were lifted off of the mat. And so deadlift pass, baby. All she had to do was start swimming, you know, one of her arms under for that, for the double unders. And then her knee was already over Bianca's uh, abdomen, almost yeah. like a neon belly. So she just cut an angle, yeah. and then she was like on neon belly, like yep. instantly. Um, and then by that point, you know, Bianca's starting to try to turtle, and Anna does a really awesome job getting the cradle position. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I, I thought she got pass points, but, you know, I, yeah. I'm not very talent. I'm not good at identifying points and, and how they're awarded. I'm about three quarters of the way through the IBJJF rule book for 2019. Uh, I'll let you know when I finish it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they do give her advantages, and she she almost gets a, a back take off of this too. It was awesome. So that there was action she, at the end. She also kind of got ripped off on a sweep that I I think I think yep. she got. I mean, she ended up winning on the ads anyways. But yep. that sweep was. Yeah, I agree. It I, wasn't that close to the edge of the mat, and it yep. was pretty. It was about halfway through when the dude started calling time. Yep. Yeah, it was it was a weird ref funniness. It was a it was a weird reset, but she won anyway, so it's not as big of a deal, I think. Yep. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So next match, oh man, Emil, you got the name. Uh, Mayra McKean defeats Kleber Clandestino via points, eight to four. Charles uh, Duende defeats Gustavo Zimu via advantage. Gabriel Royo defeats Caio Almeida via choke. Renato Mourinho defeats Sebatha Lace via points. Four to two, and Marcos Pecho defeats Alexandra de Jesus Robinho via points, four to nothing. So, you guys got any closing thoughts on BGJ Stars? No, I I am surprised that we saw this much fifty fifty. It like, was a lot. It was a lot. We got to cover fight to win. There's gonna be there was more, <laughs> but wait, there's more, dude. We gotta have a title this week. This week show of like fifty fifty kill my parents or something like that. <laughs> it was there was a lot of fifty fifty this weekend. Um, I we kind of talked about it a little bit with the fight with the um. The IBGGF rule set isn't necessarily the most spectator friendly. And yeah. I think in professional matchups, especially when you don't have like a bracket or a tournament, there needs to be some changes made to how people have to engage in 50 50 because you can get cards that sit in a lot of 50 50 like this. I think, well, one thing that you can do is take away sweep points from 50 50. I yeah, think. we've like, talked about that's a major change, but that doesn't help fight to win. It doesn't help fight to win, but. I mean, we still see it, but but we, I agree a hundred percent that that's yeah. like it, we talk about like you're not out you're not out of times. anything. We talk yeah, about yeah. this I think off air a ton. Yeah. It's just like yeah. like it, it's it, you turn into the ass touch game of yeah. like my ass touch then your ass touch. And it's like most, it's like you didn't no one went anywhere. There was most could, of my uh, most of my notes when people get to fifty fifty. I just have like large blocks of what happened and call it fifty fifty butt stuff yeah, and yeah, then yeah. ignore it until it's <laughs> over. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's, su it's super technical. There's a lot happening there. It's a high level game. Like it is very very important. You just reminded me. I can only think of one match where I was like, "This is dope." That this was the um, Isaac Doderlin versus uh, Meow match, where Doderlin was like, uh, I think behind on points by two, but up on advantages, and he starts coming up on a this 50, is AJP. 50 sweep. Yeah, yeah. On, on Meow, and Meow does that insane. Like he's able to like. Somehow, by sheer force, he levitated. Of levitated. <laughs> like he levitated <laughs> like, off the mat. Yeah, like, remember this match? He, yeah. Keep his hips off the mat to prevent the he, points. He That's levitated. The only time I thought, like, 
All right, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Like, there, there, again, there's occasionally good 50-50 match, like Wagner yeah. versus um, oh, JT. Yeah, that was, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Like Hoffa versus Cobrinha. Like, those are, there's some good 50-50 matches, but the majority of 50-50 matches are who's going to come up last. Yeah. yeah. And that's who wins the match. So. I don't even know if it's who's going to come up last. It's who gets to the bottom first, which is worse. Yeah, because who gets to the bottom first is who's going to get yep. the to come points up. up. And yep. so, like, if you get to the bottom second, the best you can do is tie and then hope to get out of 50-50 and do something or maybe be up on an ad somehow. Right. Yep. Look, don't make it score points. Add heel hooks. Problem solved. Yep. Heel hooks would just solve saying. a lot of the issue. You don't, not a problem in Nogi. Just saying. Yeah, it's not a problem in Nogi. <laughs> it's not, though. It's we, an exciting position we, in Nogi because it, it, it's dangerous. Exciting and terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. there's been many times I've made the face in 50 50 because you see some guy just like going so maybe for what you do is like yeah you take away the points and if you spend 10 seconds in 50 50 yo 10 all of a sec- sudden like the fucking gongs go off and then he looks, looks her in, eagle, like, <laughs> in the what is it nog rules you show you throw a shank in the middle too Mio? Yeah. that that actually would be really exciting 10 yeah. se- if you spend 10 oh, seconds 50 50 your knees getting fucking broken like you're, you're thinking it's 10 seconds like yo at least let them like no no 10 no, 10, 10 seconds, seconds. I'm, 10 I'm, seconds I'm, is a I'm long in. time it is a long time i'm in so, i like this uh, rule so we got to see it 50 50. So I got nothing else on BJJ Stars. We're going to fight to win. Fight yeah. to win 148 takes place in Austin, Texas. Fight to win is in Texas for the foreseeable future. Um, this one was headlined by Victor Hugo defeating Max Jimenez via choke to retain the super heavyweight title at Black Belt. Yeah. Fight of the night for the Black Belts. Damn, dude. Both of these guys are huge. Yeah. Um, like they're actually the super heavyweights. Yeah. Like, this is what actual super heavyweights look like. Like, Gerard Gabriel mm-hmm. Hosha, Victor Hugo, Bouchesha, Max Jimenez, yeah. Octavio Souza. Like, welcome to super heavyweight dog. They big boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also saw 50 50 in this match, yeah. um, but it's it was a lot more dynamic. Um, Max going for a saddle off of it, which mm-hmm. I thought was really great. Um, but, dude, Victor is just. Man, yeah. like his his proprioception is that this mm-hmm. is the word that that's you the word use? I use all yeah, time. a lot. Yeah, that's a perfect word for Which it. Which is like proprioception is basically um, your understanding of where your body sits in three D space. Yes, yeah, and in in jujitsu, particularly obviously in relation to your opponent, uh, Victor just reads that and like is able to fold his leg, keep it out of danger, and go for the back take off of this. And just immediately takes the back. I was really impressed with the sequence because this was kind of kind of like gearing up to be a little bit of a slower match, and then you see Hugo just yep. like path into the back. Yep. Um, I did not think he was going to finish Max here. Yeah. And also, choke is uh, generous here. This was a nasty yeah. looking uh, face. In the I have frame. face crank down. Yeah, face not, crank. not choke. Yeah. But. You defend the choke by putting your chin down, and then you get the face crank. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, yeah, no, it's yeah. entirely legit. 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 <laughs> like you will find no qualms here with like oh, yeah, face no. crank yeah. subs. It's like I teach, no, I teach guys. Are you kidding it, me? It's I like face cr- I face crank white belts all the time, dude. Everything above the <laughs> neck and is say, the neck. Don't defend the choke with your chin. It's not a good idea. I'm yeah, sorry. Everything above the neck is the neck. Like I don't do it a ton <laughs> at the gym, but. If you do it, I'm gonna 100 percent do it. To I you. stand by my uh, my. I'll I'll face choke a white belt at least once or twice to make sure that they know that it's not an appropriate defense. And then after that, I'll just say, "Stop doing that, man." That's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had my teeth pushed into my jaw and like bruised my jaw because I was stubborn in a white belt. And then I learned. Yeah. I was like, I gotta stop. Oh, my jaw will break. Oh, hmm. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I got I got I have a ton. Honestly, I have a ton on this match. Uh, Victor Hugo is. A monster he's subbing guys i'm curious to see who they will put uh against him now yeah Kainan. Yeah. why they're from the same camp yeah oh yeah he's autos we literally had a discussion yeah about i know i for some reason i always want to put in i <laughs> always want to put um well, hugo, hugo as wasn't ha- in autos he was habero he was habero for a long time yeah i always want to put hugo as habero when he, did, actually when did he switch it was recently it was re- is he is he is he autos I don't remember him I thought officially he was still switching, Habero. but th- I'm not always great with that. I thought he yeah. was Autos. No, no he, he was, was Habero. definitely Habero. He was Habero, which is why I was kind of confused oh, earlier. Maybe, dude, maybe I'm completely off. I, I thought how, he was I thought we both took it at face value. I, yeah, like, yeah, Emil's like, they switched teams. I was like, Generally yeah, speaking, I'm that kind of thing. I believe Emil. And, and that's yeah. why I didn't say anything. I learned I didn't say most anything. of those things from Emil, so when he tells me that... <laughs> uh, shit, my bad. Hold on, let's look this up, because that would be really irresponsible. <laughs> He's, uh, let's see who he's VHS. He's, uh, he, is he Habero? Yeah, he's Habero. Yeah, he's sixth place. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I want to see him fight Kainan now. 
Ha, I oh, know a thing that Emil didn't. Okay. All right. Well, that, that, you know a lot of things that I do not. And both of you do. So um, he's now going to fight Kynan for the super great. heavyweight title. Fuck yeah. Sweet. Never In the mind. Key, baby. Cool. Okay. Turn everything down. I said, ignore it. That's dope as fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah. In terms of how that... Now it's it's worth speculating how that matchup goes. But I still got Kynan. Oh, of course now you I don't do. want... Yeah, yeah now it's... Yeah. You, you're, you're, I think you've picked against Kynan... I can't remember the last time that I, I don't think him. so. Either. Like, I was thinking like Spider, ADCC, like, and usually you're right. Yeah, it's well, a good I mean, bet. It's, it's a good bet. Yeah. It is a good bet. Um, pick the number one guy in the world. Like, yeah, yeah, crazy. but like, you know, Victor's obviously like his his specialty is his guard. Um, well, he's yeah, got he's his guard, but specifically he's very mobile in the guard, and I think yeah, that that would play well different. against Kynan's top game. Yep. You know, he, he does a lot of very tricky things. He's For his size, his inversions are unbelievable. The inversions has always been the thing that, like, kind of has been weird. Him and Cyborg yeah. are both the guys at the weight that are always But Cyborg weirdly... came from a lower weight where it was normal to be doing that and then got bigger as a yeah. person, whereas Hugo's young and still Giant, playing that yeah. game. Like, it's, it's yep. impressive, and I think it gives him... I think people might eventually catch on and start getting accustomed to the fact that he's so mobile and... I think he will also probably slow down a little bit, too. Possibly. But Maybe. Not for a it's while. Not, not for like, okay. In like it's five years, yeah, yeah, I think that you're right. And you're not wrong because eventually that will be true. Yeah. Eventually Father <laughs> Time is undefeated, baby. But but yeah, it's, um, you know, that's... I'm, I'm curious to see. I, I know for sure you, you're not going to pressure pass on... Victor Hugo. Yeah. No, he's like, gonna fold over and he's gonna invert and like yeah. good yeah. luck you're back on the guard again, baby. So yeah. yeah. So I'm curious about that. So I don't have a ton of outs on the match. Victor Hugo looks good. Honestly, Max looks, looks pretty good. good. Max yeah, is the Max good. the Maryland guy now. So oh, is he? yeah, he's GF team uh Maryland. Oh cool. cool yep. Cool, cool. He moved about uh, about a year ago. Um I did an interview with him when I did a photo shoot fight to win back in I think September of right after ADCC cool. right before 80 I don't know right around ADCC um, and I come up to like his chest oh this was the second I don't this was the second reverse mount of the of the weekend too which was weird to see that twice in two high profile I think there was, was one like, in BJJ stars and then this here it was a reverse mount and, and it they wasn't even rolled through it a couple times well because like it wasn't even it wasn't even a donkey guard because no. they both had the legs yeah, fully wrapped yeah. it was yeah. double reverse mount it was super weird you know like it was what do you call that like, I, I was, I was called it double reverse really. you call it 100 100 just 100 100 <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's a name. I don't know. I'm going to ask it you for It makes sense. Yeah, but it was weird. And then I, actually, that's what ended up, because they were in that position, that's what ended up messing with Gimena's plan, I think, because he was doing a pretty good job holding off yeah. uh, Hugo for a while. And like you know, his his passing was, you know, he was taking advantage of Hugo's movements enough to start threatening a pass that Hugo had to settle back down for the beginning of the match. And then they end up in this weird 100-100 position so we're calling it now. and like uh, i think even when the commentators said it once you get to that position you like whoever makes the first move is probably going to lose it's such yeah. a high risk position and there's not much that you can do that's going to advantage yourself the, there and nothing, so you're like, waiting for the other person to do something there. yeah and you just kind of you either like look dumb it, or reset like it's the first guy to go like all right i'm gonna give up the toe hold and then and then they lose right and yeah. so the first person to make a move I often loses those exchanges in my experience. Um, and Cabana has opened up first and then there was an exchange and a little bit of a scramble. And that's where Hugo really got moving was after that and started getting good position and doing what he wanted to do. So, yeah. Next match. Yep. Keenan Cornelius defeats Mateus Luna via decision. Fight of the night for the black belts. 50, 50 kill my parents. Yep. 50, 50 um, butt stuff. There was one, honestly, sequence in this match that I was kind of upset they'd fight to win match for a little longer was the knee bar that Keenan hit uh, like in the middle of the match. Like he was rolling through, he goes for the knee bar and he's in with his hips squared to the knee and he's starting to extend and they kind of roll and then they have to reset them and then they reset Keenan to not the position that he has the knee. Yep. And it's too. like slightly off and it's not the same match. Cause I think given Cornelius's kind of propensity for a finishing and like the speed in which he finishes, I think he would have got that knee bar. Like I've just I've seen Keenan I've seen Keenan in on enough subs over the years with his highlights and like all the Cornelius footage that I've watched because he's one mm -hmm. of the guys that's had literally you can find almost every Keenan match from Park Bell onward. Yeah. Like and I've watched I think I went back like a couple months ago and went through his old YouTube channel and just went through like a ton of his like old Park Bell yeah. matches when he was even like with Lloyd still. 
like that era of him. And like that dude, when he gets on a sub, he just has this little different look to him. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, but it wasn't a perfect scenario yeah. either. And he no. was off on an angle. So I don't think Wait, that they're... Are you talking about this knee bar here? That one? No, no, no. I'm talking oh, about the yeah. one before the before reset that. there. Yeah, yeah. They, they're on the edge of the mat and he's turning over and he's about to turn it open and like to start locking to go down on it. Mm-hmm. And it looked like just with where his positioning was in the role, it looked like it was going to be super strong and Keenan was most likely going to have the jump on with the next reaction of Luna was going to be, which is to turn and force it to 50-50, like he does when they reset. But Keenan, where he was spinning, I think had the jump on where the knee line was going to be and so was going to finish it. Maybe that, that's what I saw again. I haven't I rewatched yeah. it like once. I, I have written down here looked like he could finish, but they got reset. Yeah. So I I agree. I don't it, he could have finished, though. I don't know yeah. if it was. Well, I think this is like this and the other knee bar attempt in the match are the two big kind of defining. I was about to yeah. say the knee bar was the the only thing from really from either side that generated that was like a clear submission. Yes. Yeah, well, at the end, too, there was like a, a straight ankle lock no. slash knee bar thing, and it uh, Keenan's version of it was better than look at Luna's. This. But look at this. It was, I had this, I had it was, this snapshot. It was, yeah. It. it was like, th- like there's nothing there on either person. No, no, no. Neither of them were going to do it. We but. also have a rule in the show that uh, mirror ankle locks don't count. Like well, fit, like, the, the, the thing with that though was that Keenan started shooting for it because there was like 15 seconds left, and he was like, yeah. "Fuck it, I'm gonna do whatever I can at this point." And then Luna kind of just like, "I'm doing it too." Yep. Yeah. And like grabbed it super late, fifty fifty. An- oh, sorry. An- even ankle like dueling toe holds, dueling heel hooks, dueling yeah. ankle locks don't count. Yeah. That's like fair. until some guy lets go, then it counts. But if you're dueling and you finish, like it doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. And in general. Uh, leg locks in the last thirty seconds. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the rule. That's the grappling around rule. That's the leg locks in the last thirty seconds don't count. I think there's one time where we've been proven wrong about. Yeah, that. I mean, it happens occasionally. It yeah. does happen, but the I want to say at least ninety percent of matches. Yeah, where there's, there's a, where there's like oh <laughs> and oh I a, can't pass the guard. There's ten there's, there's fifteen seconds, thirty seconds left. I better go for the leg lock. Like it, they don't get it usually. Yep. Uh, yeah, I loved uh, earlier in the match. Keenan's ridiculous selling of the toe hold that was not a toe hold. Yeah, it was just like I he's. I will give him you credit. Tell for that. He how sold aware, it. Yeah, you can tell how aware of the rule set he is. That's he knows thing, he needs to rack. That is up. one thing I do appreciate about Keenan though is like that dude is a dude that understands his rule set well. Yeah. It's the name talk with Hanger on on their podcast. Like he talks about understanding what the judges are looking for, what the rules like yeah. knowing. He is one of the guys that is very vocal about understanding the rule sets you're competing, but he, yeah. he's from Galvao. And that's one of like the hallmark things of Galvao. Even Mo talks about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talked about it on the Mapper and podcast. It was like all the referees agree that Galvao is the best dude to have in your corner because Galvao understands the rules better than anyone else aside from the referees. Like he just knows what how it's going to be scored, where you want to be. And Keenan spent what? Years. Five, yeah. six years. My at really Otto's. formative years that define who you mm-hmm. are as a black you know, belt, too. You the, know. the early black belt years. <clears throat> you yeah. know, and like learned all his rule sets. And, and Keenan's a guy that, even when, like in retrospect, he will talk about, like, this is what I had to do here. The ref was looking for this. And like, yeah. So he probably asked questions at the rules meeting. You know, what do I need to do? What are they looking for? And then did it. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Props to him. Yeah. Gets it done. I hope we see more of Cornelius on Fight to Win. Yeah. I like yeah, watching Keenan's game. I don't think his game is necessarily really well suited for Fight to Win. It's yeah. definitely a more points based game, but yeah. any excuse for me to see Keenan on more stuff, I'm happy he's now yeah. on the Fight to Win stage. I'm happy he gets a win here so we can potentially see him, you know. I think it leads to, I mean, watching him in this match, I think he was doing some things that he might not have in a points match, and I would much rather see him do those points match type things. Uh, I think he was going for some submissions that were like this one at the end and the toehold and some things that were just I'm, I'm probably not going to happen. That we get like old school Keenan, like purple brown belt Keenan, like early black one. He was just subbing dudes. Yeah. Like that's kind of what I'm hoping. We see him more fight to wins. He gets more comfortable with it and he starts like going off because sure. he can do it. Sure. Like he's a special submission guy. I think he, you look at his purple belt submission rates, like they're ludicrous. I think sure. he grand slammed and subbed like almost everyone or something like ludicrous i want to see it come back a bit because he can do it it's not gonna happen but i want to see that so that's all i got for that match (laughs) sorry yeah that's that's it i mean it just looks over and just kills my dreams like like 
<laughs> no. All right. Next up, we have Chris Robertson defeating Bruno Bastos via decision. He becomes the Masters black belt super heavyweight champion. Didn't Bruno Bastos retire at Kasai in Dallas? Oh, yeah. After the Cyborg match or after the Nick Rodriguez match. I forgot about he that. He retired. That was him? I remember the retirement. I, I think just can't was, remember if it was Bruno Bastos. I think that was Bastos. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Well, well he's unretired. Retire. People retire often. Yeah. Yeah, Gustafson. <laughs> So, yeah. Chris, we've seen Chris uh, a bunch of fight to win. He was the prior brown belt um, Masters super. He might have been the Masters plus super heavyweight title, but I knew he was the How Masters. The fuck do you remember all of these? Yeah. It's I listen amazing. to the commentary. And then also, I was, we've covered him before on the show. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is all I do, guys. Like, I, <laughs> I work my actual job, and then, like, I watch jujitsu and then, like, go through jujitsu Instagram and then go through notes and then go through results. It's still, sure. It still amazes me. Yes. <laughs> Commentary oh. also talked about it. Oh, okay. All right. Which, which helped out a lot. <laughs> okay. uh, next up, we have Kendall Marie Rusing defeating Brittany Elkin via guillotine. This is the first time we've seen Elkin back in a little bit. Uh, we just saw Kendall versus, I think, was it Elizabeth Clay? Clay took a really nice match. Um, and then we yeah. saw prior, we saw Kendall versus Gabby Garcia. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, this match was honestly super back and forth. I think Kendall finishes Brittany with like 10 seconds left or something like that. I, I don't, that's not my memory of the match. I feel like Kendall was in mount for large portions of the match. Yeah, and definitely. I, like I think she had a pretty dominant performance. Sorry, had a very dominant performance. Oh, that okay. At certain points, ended sure. up being back and forth. Sure, there were some exchanges that were nice, but I think overall, grand scheme of things, Kendall dominated the match yeah. pretty heavily. And then it finished off with a sub at the end. Yeah, uh, goes to the front headlock, which which is where you know Kendall's wrestling background comes in heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, pulls in, pulls Elkin in, and then doesn't even have to sit through with like the leg in the middle. Just kind of finishes from almost the front headlock position and just turns up. Yep, really good finish. I'm curious to see who we're gonna see Kendall face now because she's almost in this like yeah this middle range of like. She's just recently fought a lot, a lot of the top women at over 60, um, but she's got wins at over – she's like right yeah. in that middle like five or seven spot for women's over 60 kilogram division. Yeah. Next up, we got Richard Noguera defeating Andres Brunowski's via decision. That uh, gets Keenan's yeah. instructor black belt that runs Legion. I love Andres's passing style in general. Wait, Zach, that's the name you can get? Oh, I, I trained with him when he was in oh, Cleveland, and he was he was young at the time, but he trained in Cleveland, and I like, would... You're messing up Claudio Calzan's names, other names, like like Andres Pernodafkis is the one you can get. You are not allowed to make fun of anyone for me- messing names up. Yeah. That's reasonable. Um, <laughs> no, but I knew him a long time ago, so I remember the name for that. But yeah. his passing style is generally really good. He I feel like he hasn't put up good wins recently. He's, but I think he, he was injured for like two years. He was, he was hurt, gone for like two years. And then I he's think. been instructing lately and, mm-hmm. you know, starting at Atos school. and then at, yep. at Legion. At Legion now, yeah. I think yeah. he's Legion's like, he's like Keenan's number one yes. instructor guy. Because Andres right came right. over with Keenan and that was, yeah. good. was the big discussion when we were talking with Josh about it was like, is Andres going to come over or not? Oh, and yeah. And then it's like, because it was rumored that he had come They're over. Good friends, and it wasn't, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so he came over and this is the first time we've seen him. Yeah. Uh, really close match. Um, which I was on the bottom. Andres was really passing. It was double under for yeah, like, for like the whole match. Yeah, it was. <laughs> like a, it was a. Match. It was a slower yeah. match. I kind of would have like. There were guys, explosive moments, but they were in the same position. Most yeah, they were of the in time. the double under, yeah. and like, Andres was like head buried in double under, like double yeah. pant, double sleeve grip the entirety of the match, just yeah. looking for that passing sequence. I just wish we'd have seen both guys kind of like, like open up a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. Next up, we got Matias Luna defeating Carlos Souza via decision. Eric Raposo defeating Marcus Duthit via decision. Juan Fernando Garcia defeating Cristobal Chavez via split decision. Vitor Corte defeating Chris Crosby via footlock. And that was submission life for the black belts. And Gilvin Go- Go- sorry, Gomez defeating Gomes. Gomes. Thank you. Henrique Nobrega via split decision. On to the brown belt results. Uh, Mike Diaz defeating Danny Hernandez via split decision. Fight of the night for the brown belts. Raylor Grout defeating Elder Cruz via guillotine. Sloan Climber defeating Justin Rainick via front naked choke. That was submission of the night for the brown belts. Dude, the commentary was like t- discussing like what it was. And Seth was like, front naked choke. Um, you ever seen front naked ch- If you've not seen a front naked choke before, it's pretty fucking brutal. So go back and watch the finish. It's like, it just, it, it's a, it, you don't see the choke a ton, so it's cool when you see it. Marlon Tanaka 
uh, defeats Nader Tanier via knee bar. Eric Coe defeats Austin Fraley via decision. Zach Cothran defeats Jacob Landon via armbar. Darren Connor DeAngelis defeats Sean McClavery via bow and arrow choke. Uh, Andres Ramos defeats Levi Demura uh, via decision. On to the purple belt results. Scott Lasider defeats Spencer Fossier via cross choke. Submission of life for the purple belts. Felipe Daniel Ferreira defeats Juno Lucero via decision. Fight of the life for the purple belts. Mateus Danas defeats Zach Wolivar via decision. Jacob Kasama defeats Mac Katamaglia. Katamaglia, sorry, via choke. Robert Robinson defeats Ned Johnson via decision. Gabriel Costa defeats Dory Arlen via, via decision. Ramiro Leon defeats Larry Bradford via decision. Walker Madden defeats Billy Akins via decision. Kimoy Anderson defeats Branson Hansen via decision. Stephanie Williamson defeats Caitlin uh, Cardenas via decision. Max Hansen defeats Evan Kotzer via decision. Michael Walker defeats Nicholas Lewanang via decision. Livia Santos defeats... Rebecca Kaka via decision. Brandon Gambushi defeats J.D. Ortega via decision. Under the Bluebell results. Shaka T- Curtis defeats Dayton Biggs via split decision. Andre Cuna defeats Richard Pema via decision. And Roman Baker defeats Freddie Marquez via decision. So that does it for Fight to Win 148 in Austin, Texas. So what do you want to preview next? Uh, we can either go into Submission Underground 17 or we can go into Who's Number One. Who's Number One, dude. So Who's yeah. Number One headlined by Gordon Ryan versus Ronaldo Jr. Um we I talked about this a little bit on like Reddit and like in some posts there. These matchups are bonkers, dude. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> this match is interesting. Again, no time limit. I do appreciate Gordon's come out recently and being like, look, I've beaten everyone in all the formats I want to fight in. I want to fight submission only, no time limit. You want to beat me in that? Like, go for it. And I'm like, look, Gordon, you're number one at the weight, potentially number one in Nogi, yeah. double ADCC gold. Dang. You want to fight guys in that format and you want to fight frequently? I, I'm, I'm in. I'm down. You, you earned you you earned the right to do it. I he's the one dude that I will watch in a no time limit submission only. And he's also his last three matches that have been in that format have been under 15 minutes. Yeah, most of them under 10 minutes. So he's subbing guys anyway in that format. I'm down. I, I've been watching a little bit for Ronaldo. Um, kind of less than I would like to. He has a really good highlight versus him and Jake Watson uh, at the. Bra- I think it's. Black Belt, Nogi Worlds, um, and it's a passing sequence. Like, Ronaldo's a really, really dynamic top play passer. I just don't see his pathway to victory here versus Gordon Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. I think, honestly, Gordon will probably try to play close guard and try to, like, pimp his DVD is kind of what we've seen him do in the past. Um, he's kind of talked about, like, the level of respect he has for Ronaldo, which is crazy because Ronaldo's, like, a good competitive player level black belt but primarily a gi fighter mm-hmm. um so i'm getting I'm, I'm curious to see like how gordon ryan approaches this i i don't think he will do what he did with pat downey and kind of mess around for a long period no. of time because that kind of blew up in his face um but i'm i'm curious to see like well, where he paths to i mean he he might be able to mess around for a while on ronaldo but i don't really i think he'll kind of put a stamp on it. i think he'll probably yeah. like go through the sequence and then try to put a stamp on it. I don't really know how he's going to finish. Um, I, I, Ronaldo, I don't really know what Ronaldo's path to victory is here either. Like, pass him, get around, like, try to north-south choke him, try to take his back off of the north-south, I mean, maybe. It's hard to f- come up with a pathway to victory for anyone against Gordon Ryan. Yeah. And so, yeah. my hope is just that it's an exciting match, and if Ronaldo pulls it off, that would be amazing, I think Gordon's going to give right? him 10K if he pulls it off. Yeah. I think this that's was like an bet. Instagram thing, wasn't it? It's, it's one like of those Gordon Ryan call out that like, I'll give you this much money if you can beat me because you can't beat me. He did yeah. it with Lachlan. He did it with a couple other guys. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm honestly super curious. Probably, I mean, can heavily favor Gordon Ryan here Yeah. by, you know, by no time limit sub at some point. Uh, next match, we have Gary Tonin versus Dante Leon. 15 minute match and fight to win rules. I'm hyped for this. Yeah, it's going to be good. That's going to be fucking awesome. Gonna be awesome. This is... I mean, two of two of my the, favorite guys. Yeah, yeah, our favorite guys. Two of the most complete grapplers, really. Like, you know, both of these guys, amazing takedowns. They can wrestle. They yep. can scramble. Their guards they can are sub, good. They yeah. can flash sub. They can pass. Mm-hmm. They can back take. Like, yep. we have seen Gary Tonin and Dante Leone beat guys in every phase. Like, Dante has a really great knee bar game, a good heel hook game, a good back take and guillotine game. Gary Tonin 
all of the same things. Yeah. A little less heavy on the knee bars, but we've seen him hit knee bars. Did he? Did he? Uh, what he do transitions you with? quickly out of yeah. knee bars. I feel like he uses yeah. them often, at least as far as I see. He They're uses them more as transition. Yeah. Yeah. Good arm but, bars too. Like. Yeah. I am Where, amped for this match. I have yeah. no idea how it's going to go. I give the advantage to Gary mostly because despite despite Dante Leon's ex, like very good submissions, Gary Tone is still one of the best submission defenders. He has a whole DVD. Well, yeah, I mean outside of his DVD though, like he has plenty of very near submissions where he comes back, gets out of it, comes back yeah. and wins the match or gets out of it somehow into better position. He's just and and so they're so even on so many other planes that I think that submission defense might actually come into I also play, think especially the, with like win rules. The ludicrous like frequency of subs that Tono will throw up. Oh yeah, in this format, we saw him uh, versus Cachino, like just throw sub, throw sub, throw sub. Yeah. Throw. You're like, dude, like you're not in a great position. You just like didn't matter. He was gonna <laughs> throw us and get up. Like he just will continually throw up subs the entire time. I for some reason feel like we're gonna see Leon on bottom here. I actually have. My hunch is uh, Dante taking it. Um, really? Yeah. Interesting. And I don't have like a a good way of describing it aside from like Dante, I just feel like is a little bit... They're, they both have all of these pathways that they take, all of these like insane submission trees that they take. And I feel like when I've watched Dante, he's just a little bit more direct. Like there are times when we also Gary see does him. stuff where I'm like, why that? What? Why? Why that? Or like, why didn't you settle here? I love that Gary's able to be like, "Oh fuck it, I'll just go to the next place that's good." But part of the time, I'm like, just like, you know, I'm like, that's an incredible and like impressive. But also like, why? Why didn't you? You could have. Why didn't you stop there? it here? Right. And then like crush the submission up yeah. this chain. There are times when I'm just like, I just feel like Dante's just a little bit more like willing to pull the trigger on stuff. Look at his no, Nogi Worlds run. Like, he just does what he needs to get it done in all of those matches. So, and he can just be, he can consistently deliver exactly what he needs to do. Mm. And, like, is very, not like, not that Gary is, what's the word, like, not disciplined in those. Like, Gary has a way that he fights yeah. that works really well for Gary Tonin, and he's able to pull it out more times than not. But Leon is just a little bit more measured. In how he, he approaches maybe things. efficient well, is just like a way to put it, but yeah, yeah that's, always, I don't have a good way of describing it. I've always looked at it as Gary's a lot less afraid to lose. Exactly. So he yeah, but that's also why he wins as much as he does. I right. think right because right? he just go for it. Like again, yeah. right. if, if, if you he's get me just in, gonna go for it. Yeah, right. And if you get him in a sub, he's pretty damn good at getting out of them. So he's not as yeah. afraid of getting put in those positions. And so right. there's there's and that lack of fear can be a huge advantage sometimes. I I, I said last time like I didn't think I think. Gary Tonin is one of the dudes that I would almost never pick against in fight to win in like a close matchup because his style is so it's favorable. True, yeah, because in of that his, rule set. his volume of attacks. Yeah. Yep. However, if Dante can lock him down, not just lock him down, of anyone, Dante is the only one that I could think of that could match Gary's output. No, fair. Like I agree. Yeah. I, 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 I don't. I want to see the total match after this. What? I want to see the Rotolo match with Gary. Well, after this. I want to see, yeah. like this because we've already this seen we've already seen Dante beat Ty, yeah. and now it's like this. We have this nice little trilogy with the three guys going. You know, I'm. This is a really really good matchup. Yeah, like, it's phenomenal. I didn't know I wanted this matchup until it was announced. I was like, oh shit. Me too. I can't that's believe amazing. It. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't occur because to me either. Gary's I was gone like, to MMA. Yeah, and yeah. so we saw Gary in um in ADCC with Dante, but but like the way that we talk about these guys is so like these guys are truly. Like I, I, I definitely think, like the reasons why I love both of these guys, why they're both like two of my favorite grapplers, I is the same for. Do both. you think Dante's gonna be bigger? Really? Yeah, because we see Dante like go to eighty eight, and fight guys at eighty five and eighty eight. Well, yeah, not yeah. infrequently. Gary Tone and I think is is JT's is seventy seven. Yeah, but so that's the, my only kind of thought is like. I, I'm curious again. It doesn't ever really matter with Tony. It doesn't really like yeah. usually get stopped by there's a, five or ten pounds. Just like having seen both of them, I don't, I can't think of there being like a very significant size difference. But it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be good fireworks. Match. There's no like there's n this is a hundred percent. Don't, don't no. Don't, I'm willing to say not, it. no. Now that you said it, it's gonna be fifty fifty. No, for 15 it's minutes. not. You know, it's <laughs> like these guys are not that. 
These guys are amazing. So. What was the last match you did this too? I did this with um, it was uh, a Lutes. Lutes match. It was Mateus Lutes versus oh, who was it? It was like a side match. Yeah, the and other you killed it. I'm still upset. I'm still upset about it. <laughs> Can't wait for next week. It was 50 Baby Monster. 50. No, oh, no, I don't think it was. But anyway, it was a Lutes match yeah. that you killed. And I was, I'm still salty about it. it. Next oh, week's next week's wait. title: fifty fifty killed. My weekend again. Yeah. <laughs> but Thanks, wait, Emil. Emil. There's Emil more. Killed my weekend Craig again. Jones versus Lucas the Hulk Barbosa. That match is oh, also and bonkers. Craig <laughs> fights the next day too. Think about yeah. this. He's on main event for he's not he's he's third from the main yeah. on who's number one, and then he's on Sug versus Fowler the next day. Does yeah. Sug have some like blackmail on Craig Jones? Like, are they? Are they holding his family in a basement somewhere to make sure that he's on every single card? Well, I mean, I think they're just paying him. You know, it's like <laughs> and it, it's an easy paycheck for Craig normally. Um, yeah, until he's ran one to Fowler, like it's been yeah. like cool. Craig Jones, I, the Wagner yeah. match was honestly a little like. Oh yeah, that's that true. That's yeah, just, they started giving him. Well, they, started, they started giving him jujitsu guys. They started giving him real matchups. Yeah, that yeah, were yeah. like, oh, this is a legitimate matchup. I yeah. care about watching Craig Jones in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, so before we talk about Craig Jones on Sug, yeah. let's talk about, you know, and his family being captive for competing <laughs> on Sug every weekend in Zach's conspiracy theory that I'm not necessarily disagreeing with. Uh, how do you think he faces against Hulk? It's no, good, it's a no-gi match. Uh, I, I, I got Craig on this one. Really? Really? Yeah. Yep. I think Hulk takes it. He's just such an athlete, it, it and is. the size difference is huge. And it's it's not though. They're both eighty eight. Yeah. They're both eighty eight. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're both eighty eight, and oh. and, <laughs> and Craig goes can go up significantly. Like, and you're talking about Hulk, Hulk can too. Yeah, yeah. But I I don't I don't think that there's well the main thing is again like we're gonna see for sure Craig on bottom here. And I think this is gonna be especially a, in Nogi. Like, yeah, how does I don't think this is gonna be a good match. I feel like this is going to be Craig Poles tries to go for the leg and Hulk plays the outside passing game. Well, he has to. And tries yeah. there's, to, and there's, tries there's to call literally Harrison. no way I, that you can pressure like, into We've that. seen Vinny. We, everyone saw the Vinny match. Ain't no one going to do that again. Mm-mm. No one's going to go through his guard. No one's going to do that. Because Vinny, who is tough as shit, got his leg broken in half yeah. by well, Craig yeah. Jones. Yeah. I mean, I do think Atos is going to be a lot more systematic about yeah. their yeah. leg game. And so but I I would... I'm willing the, to bet that... Who's the only guy that beats Craig with any level of frequency? It's Gordon. Yeah, sorry. The <laughs> other guy in the weight class that beats him with any level of frequency? Mateus Dennis. No, no frequency. Sure. Uh, it's been him three times. And every match. Oh, okay, the stall fest doesn't count. But that, but that's what I mean. Like, that if you count. want to consistently beat Craig Jones, you got to be Gordon Ryan, right? When no one else is Gordon Ryan, mm-hmm. beat him three times by sub at quintet, at EBI in overtime, and at ADCC. I will say that like Hulk is a lot more versatile than Mateus Dennis. Um, yeah, uh, he's. But I think where Mateus excels is that dude will stick to his game plan. Hulk will get bored and Hulk will start doing stuff and moving around and like Hulk gets not get bored is the right way to put it. Like Hulk will mix it up. He mixes it up. Yeah. And Mateus will like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. It is working. I will not do anything else. I don't care how boring this is. I think Hulk will start to like, he'll play with the mix up. It's true. I I do see Hulk turning it up. Whereas Mateus will just, shut everything down yeah um does that work against craig jones though but that's that's what i don't know like i don't, I don't know i can't think of a mat a craig jones match where he's really faced and, and it's probably i'm probably wrong but where he's really faced someone that plays such an explosive like game. an attritive passer like yeah Hulk. like I, I don't i can't think of a match where he's faced someone that that does and obviously not at that level but i can't even think of someone that he faced that that is like that. And so I can't think of how he's going to fare against please it. Please tell me these guys haven't fought each other before. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, like, please, please. We have please. all the speculation. It's like, oh, yeah, he beat him at Grapple Fest like eight months ago. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that match. Great. Cool. My, my bad, Craig. Uh, yeah, again, the style the style matchup here is really interesting. Yeah, like, and I can't make a prediction on how Craig's going to deal with it. With... I, w- I will say that, like, yeah, in, in the event that, you know, Craig is able to get any elevation, like, he we saw what he did to Vinny's leg. I mean like yeah. his If he gets in on there like he can do it. His yeah. his his submission we don't talk about this about this a lot in jiu-jitsu. You know like in in when we talk about striking we talk about like punching power but like 
Craig's submission power is like through the fucking roof. Yeah, right? he can like, break you. He, he can will, break you he quick. Will, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he will cause injury. Well, he does quickly. the stomp thing yeah. where he stomps on your hip and like, like stomps through <laughs> your leg. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I will kind of have more thoughts about this matchup as the week goes on. I don't really know who I favor in this matchup. I, th- I Honestly, I think it looks like every Craig Jones match. Yeah. It's either going to be Hulk playing tentatively from the outside, looking to throw something up and throw through, Craig trying to invert off of that and snag the heel hook, mm-hmm. or it's going to be like Craig heel hook, yeah. and that's the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you, if you, or, or it's, or it's going to be Paul Harris in the closed guards. Like it, that's, that is kind of the style, and Hulk is good enough where I don't see him doing something dumb and like getting caught. Yeah. But so that that's kind of I'm not really don't like a pick here. I kind of want to lean. And actually, <sighs> did they say what the rules are going to be for this? I assume it's who's number one rules. I assume I assume that it is not going to be points. I assume it's going to be fight to win fight rules to win for rules. both guys. Yeah. yeah, I could be points. Who's number one has done That's both. That's another reason why I I would pick Craig. You know, like yeah, I kind of I kind of want to pick Craig just because he 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 will enter in a ten or fifteen minute match. You know, he will enter into something. Right, and if it's fight to win rules, you know he's going to enter into something and be going for something. Yeah. So I kind of want to favor him there. I doubt there's a sub. Wouldn't surprise me either way. Yeah, yeah. But that's my guess of what's out. I'll be go. interested to see how how the style matchup happens. That's these are three. I mean, but, but obviously, like weighted more towards the the Gary Dante and the and the Craig uh, Hulk match but these are three really compelling matchups yeah. this is like yeah it's, it's a great it's a great main card it's all matchups that i want to see yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's like and it's all, it's, all for it's they're all reasons. matchups that are answering questions that like yeah i didn't even in some cases i didn't even know were <laughs> questions and i was like oh fuck that's actually really compelling so yeah dante versus i mean gary it's yeah. like the most yeah. compelling shit ever it's like a mirror match where one guy's a little bigger but <laughs> both guys don't give a fuck and will sub anything so uh, i don't see any other names on the card um right now uh, probably come out literally the day after the show, as per usual. But Q's number one cards are honestly usually pretty stacked and a lot of fun. Yeah. So I am happy to see you guys moving up and down in the rankings. Uh, let's move on to Submission Underground 17. Also headlined in a rematch, Craig Jones versus Mason Fowler 3. I'm really hoping this one is 10 minutes long. I know Craig <laughs> was pushing for 15 minutes uh, on his Instagram. So hopefully Chael listens. Yeah, I hope it's 15 honestly like i'm hoping okay with sorry, 10. i'm yeah. hoping for 10 yeah i'm like wanting for 15 yeah i just the first i don't know we we, we talked about this matchup ad nauseum yeah ad nauseum the yeah. first time but nothing changes there this is a great i think stylistically it's it's really interesting like mason really impressed me at adcc yeah in mm-hmm. part because of his performance against craig mm-hmm. um but also bb monstro just being able to um contain really you know, disparate people like in, in BB, just like a, a volume kind of grappler. And then Craig, just like obviously like a, an incredibly dangerous submission artist. But and it'll be interesting to see how him literally having a very high profile night or the night before weird thing influences um, that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm dumb. This shit's in August. Oh, August. they just announced it. I thought recently. It, am I stupid? Is it the wrong Hmm. Maybe they switched around. Maybe because I my I had it on my calendar as like as like August as as July thirtieth. Well, no. regardless, that's still going to be an awesome match. Yeah. Um. Whenever it occurs, um. We got actually. Yo, that's the worst waffle I've done in a long time. <laughs> all good. <laughs> that was great. We also got um. We got Roberto Jimenez versus Jesse Taylor on this. We got Brett Primus versus Richie Martinez. We got um, Amanda Lowen versus Jillian Roberts. That actually is going to happen now. So, so we, next week, just got who's number one. And uh, I completely messed up that. That's really that's okay. Who's, fun. who's number one ha- definitely has a weekend's worth of yeah. like stellar matches in there. So Yep. And then the following weekend, we got the Third Coast Grappling Kumite 5, which will be... Uh, Man, Third Coast is just cranking these dude, things Dude, they're out. cranking. Yeah. Dude, their Instagram is popping with all the matchups they got announced i'm like oh shit like every day it's just like new matchup yeah. new bracket we got like this new bracket has like taza and has um who's in the bracket right now we got 170 pounds roberto jimenez is gonna make 170 um okay. he's got like 20 pounds apparently we got ty rotolo hanato canuto hugo marquez victor Oliveira, oliver taza johnny tama 
Jonathan Gracie, super Good fights, bracket. Pedro Mourinho versus Adam Bradley. Like, it goes on. This card is dope. So in two yeah. weeks, there's that card. Outstanding. Cool. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, sweet. So I thought we had two previews to do. We got one preview to do. All good, man. Da, 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 da. So that's it for the show. What's your week look like? Anything fun? Still in a pandemic. Yeah. Just kind of doing work and pandemicking. I think uh, I, I caught whatever uh, back nonsense you have. And I had <laughs> my caught f- his broken back. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to go in for an MRI on Friday. It's my first Ooh. MRI. Oof. Those aren't uh, fun either, man. They're loud. I have I have like a a minor pinch nerve thing, and <sighs> they're sucks. it's like part muscular and part maybe like spinal like uh, bulging or whatever. So they they have to check that out. And so I, I have yet to see what the analysis is of that. But MRIs are fucking weird, man. Yeah, it's like the dubstep machine. It is, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had I've had a couple MRIs because I'm yep. pretty pretty dumb. <laughs> just be still for a long time. Exactly. I, I used to go to sleep every time I do it. I just like I'll just take a nap. I like roll in my sleep so I could never do that, or they would yell. Well, at Well, they they put you in the thing, and then it's like usually it's my mine's like the brain and stuff, oh. or like I've done it. Usually, my MRIs are the brain. <laughs> In hindsight, that's a neuro research. Yeah, that's, that make uh, you feel not good. <laughs> <laughs> what? All of mine have been for the shoulder. All of my two have been for my shoulders. I think so. I've had four of these now. Jeez. I think I'm thinking about that. Damn. Yeah, I go. I got. El- I got elbowed in the face. Hmm. Um, and there was uh-huh. like, like a, like a, I feel like a BB that was like rolling around here for like six months, and uh, didn't go away. And I was like, I maybe should get this. There was a BB in there, and they put you in an MRI machine. No, it wasn't a BB. It was it felt like a like a bone shard. Got okay, like a okay, okay. Fe- But it was, was like a, a circular. Deposit? I was about to say. Oh, we don't know what it was. Oh, okay. Eventually, it just sort of like went away a year later. That's my strategy um, with most things. Yeah, that happen just to me. just it ignore it till it goes away. Exactly. Yeah, but it was like it was troubling enough because I could like move it around and I would well, touch well. it constantly. Um, yeah, I also got like I have a lot of concussions too. So we yeah. we MRI'd me occasionally because because shit got sure. shit got wonky. And everybody's like, your brain's pretty good. I mean, it's. Not great, but it's pretty good. I also have a giant maxillary cyst in my uh, my sinus cavity. It's like a, I think it's a inch and a half cyst in my sinus cavity That's in the left hand side. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> do, weird. What do we do with it? They were like, I mean, no, they, unless it's really messing with your like breathing, like nah, just leave so, it. I was like, it's a, a giant cyst. They're like, God, just leave the it. The thing that fucked me up about the MRI was like, I have the plate in my skull, and like, oh yeah, your face got broken. In. I, I, I was like, that. what? Yeah, I got an ocular floor injury. Sure, who doesn't? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I love how the guy that fought MMA is like, yeah, my shoulder MRI. Like, I mean, and I was like, yeah. brain, face, Well, head, to be fair, I probably back. should have gotten a lot more MRIs than I did. Now you look at, brain, now you look at brains for a living. So, yeah, it's actually really unfortunate because the guy in the lab next to me through my whole PhD studied traumatic brain injury, and oh, I just, shit. like, ignored everything that he said. That he said, because I'm like, look, <laughs> it's already done. I don't want to know what the damage was. Don't tell me now. Exactly. It's <sighs> too late. <laughs> Dude, I remember sparring heavyweights, like, my first week in MMA, and, like, didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. No, no, like, you shouldn't. no one told me that wasn't a thing that you did. Dude, even like, heavyweights I, shouldn't spar heavyweights. Throw the gloves on, like, we're going, like, oh, I guess this is what you do. Getting knocked around by that, good. 145 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you, so, yeah, they had to... But how did you do that with your plate in your face? So that's what I was worried about. Uh, it turns out orthopedic implants are, there's no reason why they would put anything that are, yeah, is yeah. M- magnetically problematic for the MRI. But just because they say that, it's it's never out of your brain. Yeah, play. So is I'm this gonna like, rip my face yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. Just like a fucking, screw just flies out. Is of this you. a yeah. horror movie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was sitting there. I bet that was uneasy like, as shit. I wouldn't take a nap for you. I did not take a nap. No, yeah. I was more more than. Well, nervous. you would know right away. It would be like yeah. ooh, and then yeah. you know you die. You would yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you would hear a weird noise and then die and flies apart. Yeah, so that was that was fun, but yeah. Um, hopefully I can start, you know, once I find out what's happening, get into like, uh, like, you know, a therapeutic plan and get back to doing yoga, which is, I've been doing, um, uh, now that I can't do jujitsu, uh, take, take care of your body, bro. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez, don't be in that a, was don't, why I was doing yoga and then I ended up yoga too hard. That's really something. funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really funny, as a guy with a broken back, like that's really funny to me that right? you hurt yourself doing yoga. Restorative yeah. shit. Like restorative yoga, like. Oh, hey, not all that. yoga is restorative. It's true, yeah. yeah. The, the kind that I've been doing is Yeah, not, it's herniating. Yeah, precisely. So, anyway. So, what, so what's your week look like, Zach? Yoga. 
Um, nice. I started running again, which is uh, it's terrible. Terrible. It's God. It's so bad. It's really bad on your knees. Yeah, I especially ran, when you weigh two fifty. It's God, just you're a big dude. Fucking awful. I weigh like one forty five, so it's fine for me. I ran yeah. like actually this month I cut back way down because um my my legs started to like. Uh, the nerve pain got really, really bad. Sure, good, sure. And yeah. so uh, I cut my miles down to like I think I only hit like thirty-five miles this month. Yeah, I was up from like sixty miles, and now I'm just I'm doing like, like four a down. week, like two, two twice a week is, is where good. I'm at. But you're a heavyweight though, so yeah. like your joints are not they're not good. That's they're not, not good. a good. Actually, thing. I ran a lot back in the day. Yeah, you were young then too. I was young then, naive. Are there and... purple people that just don't hurt? Like all the time, is that? Does yeah, that... they don't do jujitsu though. <laughs> They're not listening to this podcast. You don't do combat <laughs> sports. Like, yeah, we should just do. Honestly, we should do a bonus show when there's like something flies down and just like have the entire staff come on and just talk about like, hey, you've been combat sports since when, and then list like your top five injuries that you have injury stories. I, I, I do want to go my number one worst injury ever because it's so obscure. I ripped the. Uh, my floating rib in my back oh. off of the oh. spine, the cartilage, like the ones that aren't real bone. I ripped it off uh, for like three ribs up and it was the worst thing that has ever happened to me in like maybe even not even injury wise. Like it was just so brutal. Like I, you can't drive, you can't do anything. Any turn you make, any breath Every you take. Every breath you take, you're yeah. like, ah. It's like shooting sharp pain for like four months. That Lee, was the worst thing. And it's so obscure. Lee but, has said like, he would rather get a knee injury than a rib injury and i totally like I well agree. a lot of times it's in the front which yeah is bad, I, I, that's too. I have it on video in a competition Ooh, brutal. Where I, I tore the cartilage in the ribs yep. in competition oh. and you see me make a dumb face and it's hilarious so in the back that must have been brutal for breathing yes yeah. in the back and like sleeping and driving i remember being the worst though being alive because like driving was always like okay do i want to have severe pain and pops possibly like lurch the wheel in one direction and die or do i just not want to look while changing lanes and God. risk dying here like Damn. how am i gonna my, die today that's what my choice for the back was i'm just like <laughs> right. i'm just like jesus take the wheel i just would try to just merge i just i put <laughs> the blinker on well in advance and then i do like a little test merge where you just whip the wheel a little bit yeah and then, if you hear a beep don't do it don't and then, <laughs> or what you do is, is is you just you just change your speed really aggressively and then you can like you see your mirror and then you change you accelerate like 30 yeah. miles faster and you can see if there's anything there because yeah. no one else is gonna do that same thing and then you Merch. Well, that works in in Baltimore, maybe, but in Philadelphia, that j that's a guaranteed way to get you into a crash. Oh. So. but it works fine in Baltimore. So what <laughs> what were you doing? How did you get that injury? Oh, it was actually brutal. I had it, it, this was uh, still in Cleveland, but I don't know how it happened. Uh, I know that I did like I was five weeks out from a fight, and so that was like at that time. That was when we did like we did two really really intense weeks, like weeks five. And four were so really intense. Of, oh, yeah. The and then camp. three and two were pretty intense. One was slower. But like those were the two two worst weeks. And it was sparring day and I did a three a day that day. So it was like a run in the morning, um, jujitsu in the afternoon, and then sparred at night. And I felt great. It was like the best day that I had training forever. And I was like twenty one maybe. 20 no I was probably 20 and uh right I didn't do any cool down after the sparring it was just like sparring's over I'm done yeah. for the day fucking I'm leaving I go home I fall asleep immediately and at like three in the morning I woke up with like searing hot oh. raging pain in my back and then didn't sleep the rest of the night thought it was gonna go away went to the doctor the next day and they were like yeah you're you're done man that sucks. and then it was like four. so I don't even know what happened but I I guess like I had done so much during the day that's that when I was sleeping, injury. I moved and yeah. then like, it's like something what, you happened. Up the next day, I, you're like, what <clears> happened? It's like, I don't know. This hurts a lot though. Yeah. But I don't, I think it might've actually happened while I was sleeping somehow, yeah. like muscles tensed up in a weird way and I rolled or who knows. Jeez. Trying to find out what I can do to avoid that, but no, nope. don't go to sleep. There you go. Don't, right? don't sleep. Don't do anything. <laughs> so, don't breathe. So that does it for this week on the podcast. Dude, we got to do another bonus episode soon because these are always fun discussions about how like horrible combat sports is for your body yeah. as always in the show but, your host, but they're great they Everyone are they are doing it they are amazing <laughs> as always on the show i'm your host manjo the co-host meal other co-host zach we are the grappling rewind we'll see you on the mats whenever that is stay safe if you like the show please consider sharing it on facebook with the folks at your gym it's the best way that we grow the show and we really appreciate it you can reach out to us on email we also have instagram we have facebook we have Twitter, we have Google Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.